Hi, we are here at the Cute booth in the Toradex area at Embedded World 2019. Uh, with me here, I have Santu from, uh, from Cute. He's a product manager for the Embedded area. Yeah, hi there. Hi. I'm Santo Hanen. Uh, I'm the product manager for the embedded area of the Qt, which oh, you already heard, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so I shouldn't ask who are you. You just said twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did. <laughs> so uh, you're so going to be cutting this, right? <laughs> no, no cutting. No, no. Oh, we're going live. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah. So, so what are you showing around here? What's well, going on? we're showing with all kinds of partners uh, working with Qt. Qt is very popular software development framework on the embedded environment. Toradex is one of our partners. And with Toradex, we've been doing support uh, for easy getting started environments for developers so that uh, developers can deploy to their target device from day one. Deploying from day one is super important for the embedded development because you can easily find issues with your hardware or your architecture or your designs or anything the earlier you develop. So if you find those very late in the project, that usually means delay in the project and you don't want that. So, so getting fast to market. Fast to market, deploy from day one, have all the bells and whistles ready for you when you get started. So uh, that's a big part of the work we've been doing and collaborating with uh, Toradex. Easy to get in the, into business, right? Yes. So what is the demo around here? Uh, well, uh, Toradex is having the demos, so I actually don't know myself the demos very well. So maybe you ask Stefan explaining the demos, uh, yeah. what are on the, on the Toradex stand. All right. Hey. Hi. Hi, so who are you? My name is Stefan Eichenberger and I work as field application engineer at Toradex. Yeah. Um, what we see here is a demo of one of our customers. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's still a prototype and we currently have some problems with it, but um, it is meant for uh, making pictures of food for restaurants because they always have problems to get the food in the right lighting. And um, this product basically should help them to, to have the right lighting for food. And what, what we do here, for example, we can make pictures of, um, of a module and with, with some uh, special lighting from top or from the side. So it's to automate this, to make it easier? Yeah, exactly. It's completely automated. And uh, what's over there? So over there we see uh, the Colibri IMX7. Um, it's this is one of our modules. If you install, uh, if you get our modules, it is preloaded with the Toradex Easy Installer, and this Easy Installer allows you really easy to install, for example, who to cute or uh, uh, other images that are available in the internet. And uh, uh, over here, can you introduce? Yeah. Um, here yeah, you see a, a demo from KDAP on one of our low-end modules. Um, it will be presented by Till Adam from KDA. So hi. hi. Hi, nice to meet you. So, so who are you? I am Till Adam, I'm with KDAB. Uh, we are a consultancy, we help people develop and uh, do stuff with Qt, particularly on Toradex hardware, so one of the partners of Toradex. And in this case we have a rather low power device, an IMX6 ULL, very limited resources, you've been able to put a full build of Qt on it and expose nearly the full feature set of Qt. So it's a rather simple UI for a cruise ship cabin, but it is still able to play video and basically have a, you know, a transitions and things like that. So you get an iPhone-like experience on a rather nice. low-end piece of hardware. So um, your your uh, oh, your system is made for simplicity, like a, a simple UIs, or what is it for? Well, if this is for a, for a cruise ship, so when you have a cruise ship, you have a, a cabin, it's like a hotel room, um, and this is it helps to control the climate, the lights, and the media, and call housekeeping, and things like that. So it's a simple user interface for a cruise ship cabin. And um, you, working together with Qt is, yes. is, is a strong thing, is an important thing yeah, for Yeah, I mean, we've been, we've been a Qt partner for almost 20 years, so we've been working with Qt for a very long time. It's extremely powerful, and we've been able to do Interfaces like this with a relatively low effort. 20 years partner with Qt. Yes. That's a long time. How old is Qt? Yeah. 20 years. <laughs> Qt is 20 years old? Yeah, yeah. So it's roughly 20 years old, yes. It so, started last century. So what is uh, the main uh, uh, vision or the main uh, purpose of the Qt? I think it's the cross-platform development. Uh, really easy to, to uh, implement applications and solutions uh, and then deploy them on multiple different targets. and that. Cross-platform development brings you a lot of benefits because uh, if you're not sure if the problem is in your code or in the Qt or in the underlying operating system, try it on different hardware, then you know. 
So, so, uh, and and having 20 years of development and ecosystem creation under the belt, you know, gives you a, a lot of experience on on how to make embedded systems. So it's it's not just embedded, but it is uh, it's, it's more in a, in like in the Cortex A class. Qt is used in the in the desktop, in the in the Windows and Mac. Uh, that's a big part of our business. Uh, the desktop traditional desktop applications. Qt is used for creating applications for phones and tablets. And then the embedded is the something that has really been raising in the last 10 years, uh, ever since Nokia bought uh, Qt and invested into Qt. So so the embedded development has been growing more and more important. Uh, but we, we are no longer part of Nokia, so Nokia stopped doing the, the Qt and software themselves some years ago, so now we are an independent company of our own. So uh, how many devices are there using Qt? Is it like in the hundreds of millions, billions of millions, or? Well, there's everything from toasters to space rockets, literally. Toasters? Yes, so, so um, and you I, I don't know, I don't, think we can, I, don't, I don't think we can calculate how many devices there are using Qt, there, there is a lot. And even in the embedded world, you, you only need to walk 20 meters and you'll find a demo based on Qt. There's millions of cars alone, millions of washing machines, and probably yeah. hundreds of millions is not too far off. Yes. So, so what is a, uh, the, the positioning for Qt uh, with all these RTAS that are there, or uh, Linux stuff is just somewhere else? We run on all of them, so you can basically make UI for any operating system, whether it, you know, even without an operating system on a really small MCU, but we run on everything from the smallest embedded to all the way to the biggest desktop machines. So it's about UI. Yes, it's about the UI. You can do other yeah. things with it as well, but it's mostly yeah. UI. And uh, is is it like a hard science, like hardcore science, to optimize a UI? Like you want to make things like as user friendly as possible, or how does it work? Or is it just design a lot of design? Well. Um, Currently, we are seeing the, the market situation changing so that a lot of companies who used to do stuff on hardware, who used to f design physical knobs and sliders and things, are now moving into the space of, of uh, creating uh, touch UIs and uh, visual interfaces. For them, this is uh, totally new stuff. At the same time, the whole ecosystem cannot grow developers fast enough to cater for the needs of all these companies. So the solution is better tools, easier to use tools, more productive tools, and having a strong ecosystem of partners like Kada, you know, helping the customers to actually get those things done. So, so we see that this is a wonderful space for us in the business, having all the IoT and the embedded development uh, skyrocketing. But you asked if it's easy? Um, yeah, for us, you know, we've been doing this for <laughs> for 20 years, so it's super easy. Well, it's certainly much easier than the alternatives. It's not like people don't yes. need any help anymore, and any training, of course, which we also provide. But it's it is much easier than the alternatives. So you can actually get a user interface like this up and running if you have a somebody doing the design and you have a competent developer. Uh, you can get this done with very little resources. So what are the alternatives? So you don't want to talk about it? Uh, we'd rather not. I think. <laughs> There's no alternative. No, uh, uh, oh, why, why would we talk about those? I think you know we are the. Uh, we market are the, leader in what you do? Uh, yeah, I think sure. you know we are for sure the market leader, yes. Yeah. We have um, uh, more than a million developers every time we release a new release of Qt. So, and that just works on all over the place? It's easy to get the latest Qt everywhere? Yes, and Qt, you can get in, you can get Qt many ways. So you can get Qt from us, you can get Qt from Toradex, you can get Qt from uh, some desktop operating systems when you install it in your PC, there actually is Qt in there and so on. So you can get Qt and Qt technologies in many ways. So I started video blogging because of Arcos and they had a Qtopia uh, a long time ago, yes. 2004. Yeah, that was entirely yeah. built with Qt. And uh, Qtopia was, some, there was some kind of Linux going on in the back or yeah. not? Uh, well, Qtopia is basically, at the time, was a, uh, yeah, a, a PDA user interface built with Qt on top of Linux, which was a very novel thing at the time. Of course, that's exactly what Android does these days, and it's become the yeah. leading I platform. I think Monta Vista Linux and then Qtopia yeah. for the UI. So, I mean, Qt has been doing embedded stuff and, and mobile PDA type stuff for a very, very long time. It's just that it only now has become kind of mainstream to do that kind of thing. It, it, uh, uh, it, I mean, it could have been the Android or something. At some point, Nokia was like, yeah. you know, uh, there was some other parts of Nokia that maybe didn't do the right thing or something. And 
it, it was like Android before Android. From right? a technology point of view, I would agree, yeah. 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 And then over here, we're looking at some, uh, can we look at this? Is this, how does Qt help with this? Uh, no, this after we'll just jump in here. Sorry. Yeah. So, uh, so how is it good to have Qt here? Well, this is, um, this is um, a 3D UI, an example of an automotive instrument cluster, which is built with Qt. So it's just uh, easy to build some cool looking stuff? Yes, so, so we have the, the developer toolings, the designer toolings, uh, and one of the big things we've been investing uh, in the past years has been to improve the developer and designer workflow so that when the designer is doing their UI designs and uh, interaction designs and the sketches of, of animation and all of that, that actually is already producing code which is then used part of the solution. So designer can see it directly on the embedded device, live there and then, what does the design look like on the real device, and then that actually is the code that then the developer is using to create the full application with all the back uh, and, and business logic on the applications. And this is on another example right here? Yeah, this is just another example. So every now and then we hear that the customers are, are complaining that it's, it's really slow, the embedded Linux. So this is an example, I turn the power on, and now you have the UI coming up, so it's not slow. It's, 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 it's a matter of optimization, and optimization on the right yeah. places. So this is a thing that um, our service partners is doing. So Keda, for example, has a lot of experience on optimizing on the fast boot. Fast boot is great. And uh, here the boost is a big boost. Uh, what are some of the big news around here at the Embedded World? Well, we have here. a lot of partners here. Uh, we have some interesting uh, uh, machine learning uh, and uh, uh, artificial yeah. intelligence or robotics. So right here she's doing this. Controlling the robots. We also have a full demo on our um, designer developer workflow, how a designer can do the US. Oops, I'm running into people. Yeah and uh, how the um, developer can then use those designs that was created by the designer. What is um, this? We have some demos here on, on uh, uh, automotive industry, how they can monetize on advertising. Uh, on the automotive industry, we have uh, other demos on full digital cockpit, how Qt can be used to create the instrument clusters, the head-up displays, the entertainment screens on a single sock. Uh, having all the safety critical uh, Delta is also visible for the customers. Yeah. We okay, have some updates. You can do quick updates on this. Yeah, we have some uh, examples of uh, Qt running in containers and how the containers can be updated yeah. over the air. Uh, WebGL streaming, this is a demo we've done with uh, Toradex for the remote UIs. Remote? Remote UIs, so you can have a headless device and it can have a remote UIs or you can have an industrial devices which are then showing the UIs um, on a standard browser. Yeah. So industrial automation, Qt is very popular on the industrial use cases where, where we do have all the protocols for machine-to-machine -machine interaction, what you need for the industrial solutions. And we go around here, yeah. can we check these out? This is uh, one of the hottest and new stuff what we have, so it's about the having the microcontrollers running uh, Qt. Yeah. So this is something we do as a service with our customers. Uh, and we currently have here on, on display the STM32F7 and an NXP1050. So why is this uh, the latest and hottest, right? Uh, we've been uh, very popular on Cortex-A side, and pretty much every Cortex-A device is supported by Qt on multiple different operating systems. You haven't done much Cortex-M so far? We haven't done much Cortex-M, so we have had some customers do the Cortex-M and some partners doing the Cortex-M, so we are also now looking into how can we make that part of the family of Qt products. And Is it important in the history of Qt to have hardware-accelerated uh, graphics? Yes, so, so we can support uh, software acceleration, so we have software acceleration technologies. We do support also uh, graphical, physical uh, GPUs and graphical acceleration. Nice. And then when we look at past the around there. Yeah. Yes. Okay, no, this is fine. Okay. Uh, so what is this? So, so, and this is the main demo on the <laughs> and now we have all the laughing guys, you know, yeah. with disappearing. So yeah. So so this is the demo, you know, showing um, our old old stuff uh, for the for the Qt creator and the developer working on the application. Is that is that how Qt is done? Yeah, this is how Qt is done. So this is how the Qt applications have been done. 
the so what is it called here? Uh, Cute Creator. This Cute is, uh, Creator? Yes. And then uh, from a Cute Creator, there's a very easy way to build in, uh, bring in the, the um, target hardware from different manufacturers and then de deploy directly to the target hardware. And the new thing is that we've done also the designer tooling. So the designers can create, uh, use their design tools and create a UI that actually becomes a part of the implementation. And unlike the developers, designers can also say, test their UI directly on an embedded device and see that the contrast is right, the colors are right, the behavior is right, the interaction design makes sense and all of that. So designers can do that. And the really big thing for the designers and developers is that they can save it to a repository. A shared repository, which typically is a JIT repository between the designers and developers, and then the designer is doing the changes, the developer can see those on the fly, adapt to the, those changes into their application, and then if a developer is doing any changes on that, then the designer see whatever was the change done by the developer. So this is really cutting down the time to market and the bringing efficiency on, on having teams and designers and developers work together um, creating embedded devices. And it says deploy here. Yeah, it's a deploy. What is this? Here is an example. This is an NVIDIA hardware uh, where the designer has deployed this robotic UI uh, to test what does it look like. Can we look, walk around? Uh, what kind of, you have presentations here? Well, then we have the, the other partner booth. So, so I think yeah. the partners can uh, and will explain themselves. Yeah. So I'm not the specialist on those. So I'll, I'll leave you guys see, and let you yeah. run through the partners. So. Yeah, just to have a quick uh, here. So as this is a so from here. Till can cover the yes. Till is back here, so yes. he can cover the KDAP. All right. Thanks a lot. And yeah. So uh, here at the KDAP area, yeah. what are you showing around here? Uh, we're showing uh, some tools that we make for developers to make uh, people's life easier working with Qt. Uh, most of them we release as free software, so you can download them from GitHub. Free software. To. Yes. So uh, this is free software. No, this is not. This is actually a commercial tool we make. I can stand in front, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, so this one is not free software, it's actually a commercial tool we make uh, called Guesa. It makes it a lot easier for people to um, design 3D content and then put it onto an embedded uh, product, onto an embedded device. And the idea is here that you can use the full expressive power of professional 3D tools, like uh, 3D Studio Max or Maya or Blender, and yeah. export from them. And then we have some tooling that prepares the models and the textures and all these things assets uh, for inclusion into the Qt based nice. embedded device and basically this way the programmers don't have to mess with the 3D part um, but still have basically everything available that you can do in the professional tools. Nice. Yeah. And uh, around here are you talking more about the tools and stuff? Yeah, this and is... here's a Toradex... Uh, yeah, and... we're running this on a Toradex IMX8 so to my knowledge it's actually one of the first uh, actually running 3D applications on, uh, on an IMX8 which is an upcoming NXP uh, hardware platform that we have financed for. Yeah, I have high hopes. Why? Because it's going to be a big market? Well, we'll see. <laughs> yeah? Uh, yeah, and here we have... Um, what is this? Yeah, yeah we have... There. Yeah, yeah, let me just move this around here. Can you, can you stand uh, right yeah, there? Can. Yeah. So this is a tool? Yeah, it's, it's actually showing uh, several of our tools. So we make tools for profiling, for fault analysis, uh, for memory profiling and things like that. So when we do projects on embedded, we need to figure out why things go wrong why something uses a lot of memory, where the CPU goes, and so on. And to help that, uh, to help with that, we make tools that we then mostly make freely available for other people to use as well. And uh, there? Um, this is also one of our free tools. It's called uh, Gamma Ray. It's an introspection tool for Qt. So you can look inside Qt applications and figure out exactly what's going on in there. Uh, for example, here you can see how many objects of a certain type are being created as the application is running. Nice. Look at the actual interface itself, even. Uh, there we go. You can see what's rendering here on this device. Uh, so we are attached from this PC to this embedded device, and you can see the UI and figure out how exactly it's being rendered, uh, what is going on behind the scenes. So this is way helpful in trying to figure out problems. And, and this is a, what is this? This is another one of the ULLs. It's also Toradex uh, IMX6 uh, ULL, not an IMX8 as it says here. So uh, yeah. that's a very low-powered device, and uh, we have a cute application running on there, including video playback. Uh, you can have basically uh, all of the usual controls um, that you can do with Qt running on a rather low-end, low, low cost chip. Nice. So uh, how big is uh, uh, KDAB? Uh, we're about 100 strong. 
100 strong people? Yeah, 100 people, uh, yes. How many uh, p devices out there are using your, your things? Uh, we've been helping people with projects for the last 20 years, so there must be thousands of different products out there that we've worked on. That totally is maybe millions of things. Oh, for sure, yeah. I mean, we've been working across various industries, medical, industrial automation, uh, cars, planes. Uh, yeah, basically, most things you use every day might have a pretty high likelihood of us having worked on them.